Greetings, Mars here, and welcome to episode 23 of my modded Factorio playthrough. This is another loading of an old save file while I recover from the hard drive failure. Enjoy. Alright, it looks like we're good to go for making plates. And making plates uh, is a very similar process. You know, it just, you take the, you make molten tin from the ingots, and then you can turn those into plates. And it's, uh, the recipe is the same the process is the same as with uh, the iron and copper where it's 100% efficient but because we are uh, losing 25% with the slag it's 75% efficient but 75% efficiency is much better than the 33% efficiency it would be if we were just processing it directly. So this is kind of a lot of extra steps considering we could have already just made it without doing all of this, but this is much more efficient way of doing it. So I would prefer to do it this way if possible. So since both of these are being mined by burner drills and they're very inefficient, uh, I'm only going to work on one side and then wait for the one side to be completed and then we'll work on the other side. So. That doesn't make sense, hopefully it shortly will. But uh, we're gonna need some more space, so let's move some of the power poles over. Um, let's start with this one, I guess. There we go. Oops, that one's not quite long enough. There we go, put some lights in here so we can see. And use the robots to clear us some space. Don't need a whole lot more. Maybe to right there, just to leave room for this to expand if we need it to. And then over to the side. And uh, I actually have a, a better and more efficient uh, placement of these machines. It takes up a smaller footprint than this footprint. So, the ratio is the same, where it's per one furnace, but we have two because of uh, inserter limitations. We need two induction furnaces, and then six casting machines. Well, it looks like we're uh, out of circuit board, so I should probably pick up some more. And things out of copper, if some of these machines are out. I'll pick some up out of here, stick them in there. So let's place this first machine here. Oop. Right there. And then over here. Set the recipe for tin. And they run at the speed of one. And 12 ingots every four seconds is three per second. So we're going to need three inserters per machine. Looks like we're out of a lot of stuff here. So I'll start placing these guys down. I believe it's right here, right there, right there. Yes, right here, right here, here. It's a little weird to place them down, but it'll make sense in a little bit. So we place those. And we're going to need tons of copper pipes. Some undergrounds this time because it's a super snazzy setup. And these machines should put out uh, one plate per second, I believe. So you, how you place mach these machines is fairly particular. You need to spin these machines around in just the right way so they don't uh, compete with each other. So we spin these around one so they get their connection from here. These ones aren't that important. It's the machines over here that are important. So see how they have connections on three sides? We don't want them to have a connection on this side because if we placed this stamp right next to it, you see how there's a pipe here? Well, there would be a pipe running down there. 
And if it was a different product, it would cause the mixing of the pipes, which is bad. We don't want that. So we're going to pick these up and instead rotate these. See how there's no hookup on this side, which means we can place them right next to each other. Now this machine is getting its input from here and we can get feed these two machines from this point and use an underground to get the resources over there. And I believe that should be everything except for the power. Oops, we need to have one right here to reach. There we go. Probably some lights would be nice. And there we, there we go, it's running great. And now that we have a uh, consumer of tin, we're going to start mining it, mining the bobmonium here. So when, we're, when we set up the lead, we don't want to run both of them simultaneously just for pollution reasons. So we're going to wait for one to fill up before we work on the other. Or at least before we hook up the other. We can still work on it just fine. So this is where the tin's going to go. Nice straight belts, just like I like them. It's going to take a fair amount of time for these to fill up because each one of these is a chest that's going to hold 200 plates, so it's going to take a small amount of time for them to uh, be ready to go. Looks like we're okay on power. Let's see, how are we doing on the byproducts? See, the byproducts are almost full. And once they fill up, uh, it won't be able to... It'll it'll clog up and stop working properly, so we need to pick up these byproducts. To keep the tin flowing. Yeah, I could hook up both machines, but once this thing works through the backlog, uh, it's going to slow down in speed quite a bit. Alright. Let's copy this blueprint and use it for the other side. Uh, let's copy this part. Place it right there. It's a uh, it's slightly it's slightly smaller. It's it's like 10 or 20 percent smaller in space than the previous setup I had. So I'm pretty proud of this. It seems to seems to be a pretty good new design. So it looks like we need some. Copper pipes. See, it's pretty fast though, our six plates per second. Doesn't take very long to fill up. Okay, and uh, looks like we're short on some lights. And let's make the uh, machines. Set these to tin, or to lead. I keep getting those two mixed up. Lead. There we go. Hmm. I know I put it there, but it would be slightly cleaner if I did this down by one. So let's do it this way instead. It's all about the clean belts. Looks like we got lots of extra here. I want to hurry up and throw those in the machines before they fill up, because otherwise I'm going to have a bunch of plates, tin plates sitting in my inventory that I'm not going to have any use for for quite some time. So let's fill these up. And let's get this lead set up. Is there a blinking thing down there? Nope, just me. Okay. I'm just going to leave it right there and not make the final connection. Going to let this do its part. Yeah, see, it's worked through the backlog now. Now it's running at full blast and making tons of pollution. Uh, is there anything else we can do while we're waiting? Uh, I think so. 
we can kind of more efficiently handle stone because right now we're just randomly picking up stone but we also need to produce stone and we're eventually going to have that on the belt so it would be kind of annoying to have to keep coming to these boxes and switching them to uh, pick up and then drop resources just depending on whether this is empty or full so let's redo this a little bit and do it a little more efficiently let's have the input come in up here and this power needs to be over here and to do a full belt we're gonna need since they run at the speed of about one per second I believe that means we're gonna need uh, yeah about 14 maybe slightly less but let's just do 14 All right, let's pick that up let's make some steel chess why not? It's going to take up some of our steel, but uh, we can afford it, I think, a little bit of it. Need some more. So that looks like that's uh, seven on that side. We want to have seven on this side. Lots of storage for stone, because we're going to have stone overload like crazy. Lots of inserters. Looks like we need some more motors. Whoa. That crafting queue, though. Okay, let's try that again. This time, easier. Looks like we're out of regular motors, too. I'll just pick up both. So what this is going to be is a stone buffer. Which means resources will be able to come in and out simultaneously. I'm trying to figure out the best way to go about this. It's a little bit of a mess, but it'll get the job done. There we go. So now the stone is going to simultaneously come in and then uh, be ejected out of the boxes and fill up these. Now since this isn't going anywhere, it's not going to be as automated as it would be. But it won't be too long before the stones are on the belt and we're using them regularly where that's going to matter. So that's a slight improvement. We could do the same with crushed stone, but since we're not using crushed stone for anything right now, uh, I don't see any need to build it quite yet, but we'll get to it soon enough. So how are we doing on tin? Alright, it looks like tin has filled up pretty much completely. Now it's just these machines here. So in a little bit, that'll be done and we can fire up the lead. Well, with that, it looks like we've... Uh, caught up to the next save file so let's load up the next one and see how we did so the oxygen setup looks pretty similar the pipes are in a slightly different spot but it looks pretty similar nothing to complain about yep we've got our sulfur dioxide storage here which is pretty good this looks all very similar and there's the new setup which also looks pretty similar oh but <laughs> Looks like I forgot to, uh, or I hadn't yet, I didn't forget, I just hadn't yet uh, hooked up the belts yet to the bus. But that's easy enough. But uh, it looks like I was running tin, and although it looks like lead's connected, it's actually not because I didn't have it hooked up on these pipes. So I was doing something similar where I was waiting for all of the tin mining to stop before I hooked up lead and let it run in earnest. So that's pretty similar. And it looks like the stone buffer. It looks something's different about this that looks slightly more elegant. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. But uh, it's very similar. So that looks pretty good. And I think we're ready to continue working on this next save file and keep moving forward. Uh, it looks like we're about halfway through the save files. Um for the videos that were lost in the hard drive failure. And then uh, once I catch up, uh, then we'll be going in real time again 
and you won't have to uh, kind of keep seeing these factories mysteriously change every time I load a new save file. You know, we'll just be working on the one file and everything will be good. So uh, let's keep moving forward. The next step is working on alloys, but that's going to have to wait until the next episode. So I will see you later.